So like I said, mill tooling in this shop is primarily R8. There's other ones you can choose from, but you're kind of limited based on the size of machine that you have that you're working with. R8 is very common from little benchtop mills to bridge ports and even some of the smaller bed mills, prototyping mills. If we do or when we do graduate to a larger vertical machining center, we'll probably be going Cat 40 is another very popular one, probably the most popular in industrial production in the US, CAT40, NMTB, CAT50, things like that. So let's talk a little bit more about integral shank tooling. What that means is that the collet part of the R8 design is one piece with the head. In this case, this is a face mill and this is the R8 shank. For a long time, these were two pieces. You would buy the face mill separately and it would mount to the shank. But what they have been doing is making them one piece, which has the advantage of being a little bit more rigid, simpler, and also being more accurate. So everything is ground together as one piece on centers. You get a face mill that is matched to that shank. So you get the best scenario with this particular particular tool. So over here we have a full series of face mills. They start out at one inch and these are standard APKT inserts. We have a little two insert one inch tool, one and a quarter, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. You pick the size you need for the project and they're reasonably inexpensive so having a whole set is not a big deal. These are the ER collet holders, these are ER16s, ER11, these are ER20s here and they go up all the way up to ER40s. We don't have any of those yet but we will be getting those in. This is a another integral shank sample. This is a slotting cutter so this little cap comes off with this screw and then you can put different size and different thickness of slitting saws in there. And it's all one piece, it's all ground together, so it's as concentric as you can get. This is another one that we made as an example of when you need to get really far into a slot or a hole or on the side of a part. We made this slitting holder out of a piece of ground stock. So we can put this in a three quarter inch holder, whatever depth we want and do our operation on our part. A lot of the times you still, you know, you do have to make your own stuff, but if you're starting out with everything that's available, it minimizes that and speeds up your work. So coming around here, we have arbors. They make larger ones. This is a larger slitting saw on a straight arbor that's integral shank R8. So very rigid, all ground together again. Primarily, we use these for gear cutters is what we do a lot with these. So we can do gear cutting in our mill on the side or we have a horizontal attachment where we can cut horizontally also. These are the most commonly used ones. So we have integral shank drill chucks also. The same thing, they're a little bit more accurate than the two piece ones that mount on like a Jacobs taper. This is an example. This is the old style, this is the integral shank. Having a separate drill chuck would normally press onto this taper and be used in that fashion. We have a sample of the solid holders. So these are for rather large tools for R8 spindle, but for long tools and roughing and you wanna be as rigid as you can be, it's pretty much the best option. They're still very short. If you look at the larger ER collets, if you get an ER40 on an R8 shank, it's gonna be pretty long. It's a massive head on top of here to hold that collet and hold it rigidly and it ends up being very long. So sometimes you can get away with a solid holder that's shorter than an R8. And in that case, these are the best option. And then you can get up into large diameters. Three quarter, one inch, one and a quarter holders are not really that useful, honestly, in R8. They're just too big of a tool to be very effective in, a, in an R8 spindle machine. It's just too much load. And then things like this, you know, is also what I would consider to not be very useful 
helpful. We almost didn't keep this one, but we have found that it's a good idea to keep things you come across that are unusual. For example, this one is very good for plastics and wood or a deep cut that would be very difficult to do on the mill in a big piece of plastic or wood. The machine can cut that with this tool with no problem and there's not enough load on it to cause an issue with the spindle overloading or, or having torque issues and things like that. And then coming over here there's lots of things, adapters available. These three are Morris Taper adapters. So you have Morris Taper 2, Morris Taper 3, and Morris Taper 4. We found that the Morris Taper drills are very useful. If you have a long deep hole to do in a material that's not too nasty, then you can do a lot with these drills very quickly. The benefit of the Morris Taper is that this taper will grab much better than a straight shank. You can get any size drill you want with a straight shank, but it's never going to grab like a Morris Taper and a lot of these even have a flat lock in the back. So this flat tab here actually engages into a cutout in the bottom of this tool holder so that it cannot spin. And when you're drilling big holes, especially in an R8 machine, you often with straight shanks will run into the tool spinning on you, which limits your machining ability quite a bit. So by going to Morris Taper, you get a lot more capacity and can do some very interesting long stuff with that. And then we have things like these. This is an integral, well, it's not integral. It's a face mill arbor with a shell mill, what's called a shell mill on the end here. And these are a neat tool. I like the idea. I haven't been able to use these very effectively. I just find that the machine does not have enough torque to really use them well. I can outperform these every day with an aluminum rougher, smaller diameter, high speed steel end mill. So I'm not really sure how useful these are. I haven't been able to get these to work very well. This is a great idea. It's a large shell mill rougher. The machine really just doesn't have enough torque to take advantage of this. You can't really take the depth of cut on the side that would make it really worth it. I can hog through material with a three quarter inch rougher end mill much faster than I can running this thing. And then as far as other interesting, a little more unusual integral shank tools is fly cutters like this one. So it has a fly cutting head on it with the shank. This is really, it's like a, it's an old school face mill is what it is. Still really good for really fine finish on material where you're gonna take just a little bit off to make it super flat. This is great. Single point, so it's a little bit slower feed, but still worth having. And it's the same thing for 20, 30 bucks. It's very worth having this in the shop because you're gonna find that you may need to set up a specific diameter to cut a very specific radius. And that's one of the things that this holder is really good for. And then you have things like this, uh, boring bars also. This one you can use to cut very precise holes. You'd rough it out some other way and do the finish cut with this and it's adjustable the diameter by a thousandth of an inch and it moves this dovetail in and out to set your diameter. And it will mount tools in two directions. You can do large holes by the side mount and small, small holes by the tip. And this one is a straight shank, but you can get these uh, R8 integral also. And then coming up here to some of the bigger stuff, you can get very large face mills. This is a five inch face mill. They don't make these sizes integral because it's kind of unusual to be running these on an R8 machine, but still very useful. You know, you may not be able to take a huge depth of cut with it, but it's a very efficient removal rate of material for a machine that size. Even if you're only taking a 50 thou depth, you're gonna face off uh, material a lot faster than you would pretty much any other method. And we do have an eight inch here also. This one's very handy for very large stuff. This is kind of pushing the limits of an R8 spindle. Normally I have this mounted on a shank just like this one, but we're making a new one for this, adapting it a little better than we had it before. And then we get into some of the weirder stuff where you have three jaw self-centering chucks that are mounted on the R8 shank ready to go. These are really handy. It's kind of a weird tool. We have been using these for turning, doing uh, turning in the lay, turning in the mill. So you can do CNC turning on the mill also. We've done that for certain applications where we either didn't have a lathe or the lathe was down different uh, periods in the shop history here. You can make a special tool and clamp onto it and use that to cut something else. You can mount stones in here. You know, there's tons of stuff you can do. 
and then we have the straight arbors here. These come in metric and inch. So, you know, 27 millimeter, 22 millimeter, one inch, 32 millimeter, almost every size that you would need for slitting saws, gear cutters, whatever you might need to do. You know, there's a huge variety of everything. We have different styles drill chucks here. This is a keyed drill chuck. We really like the keyless ones. This is the partner to that. The keyless ones are great for fast change, but they don't clamp as tightly as the keyed ones. This is very fast, very accurate, not quite as rugged. This one is if you're gonna drill into something really nasty and you need to really clamp it hard, then you would use this. To be honest, if you have something nasty, I would probably put it in an ER holder. I'd put a drill in an ER collet. That would be better than this, but we still have this around because sometimes it's handy and faster than uh, setting up another ER tool. And then basically what we have up here is just a garden of solid holders all the way from 1 8 of an inch up to half inch. They generally go 1 8 3 16 1 quarter, 5 16 3 8 half inch. And then the larger ones below that we talked about, 5 8 3 quarters, 1 inch and up from there. But it's really beneficial to have a whole set like this set up. These are pretty much tools that we use all the time. They're standard sizes. So it's great to leave them set up, the ones that you're gonna use all the time because you can just grab it and you don't have to mount it and find a holder and do all that stuff. This has proven to be a big time saver and very convenient.